Hello, my name is Sigourney, and I am the Origami Llama. Welcome back, everybody. The topic of this video is toilet paper origami. I'm sure most of you recall the toilet paper shortages back in March and April of this year, and maybe it has changed how you view the highly coveted sanitary product. Perhaps you now keep more in stock, or are trying to ration your tissue use. If you are looking to be more mindful about how much bum wipe you use, then toilet paper origami might be the solution. If nothing else, it'll class up your powder room and make you feel fancy while you take care of business. So, where did toilet paper folding first appear? Honestly, I'm not sure. I searched high and low for information on the origins of this art, and I found surprisingly little. Instead, I'll talk a little bit about the history of toilet paper and go from there. Bath tissue, in general, appears in 6th century China and only starts to be manufactured more widely in 14th century China. It took the West much longer to commercially produce toilet paper, with the first bathroom paper product hitting the market in 1857. Before that time, people used a whole array of other creative methods to clean their bottoms. The good old sponge-on-a-stick method was common in ancient Rome, but stones, pieces of cloth, snow or water, seashells, and corn cobs, among other natural materials, were used in many societies before we got our fluffy three-ply, and those are all decidedly much less fun to fold. Modern rolls of toilet paper as we know them didn't appear until around 1883, and they weren't advertised as splinter-free until 1930. Since toilet paper is a relatively new invention itself, it stands to reason that toilet paper origami is still a very young art. Now you might be wondering, what is the actual point of toilet paper origami? It seems gimmicky and impractical. If you have ever encountered toilet paper origami, it has most likely been in a hotel. The reason they do this is to indicate that housekeeping has cleaned the room. It shows an elevated level of care and attention to detail that proves subtle and effective. It has become more popular in recent time, and the practice has spread to many hotel chains around the world. Stephen Gill spent three years photographing examples of toilet paper origami from hotels he stayed at in various countries. I have included a link to an article about it from The Guardian in the description below, as his insight on the subject is actually very intriguing. You can also find a link to his book of toilet paper origami photography. Today, we will be focusing on Linda Wright's book of TP origami called Toilet Paper Origami on a Roll. Her title brings up an important point. There are, in fact, two different types of toilet paper origami, models folded from separated sheets and designs folded still attached to the roll. These folds range from extremely simple to extremely complex. I will show you a few of the most common folds that are publicly available. All right, so starting off, you're just gonna need a roll of toilet paper and hopefully you'll have access to that. <laughs> I know it was in very short supply before, but I, I've just got some, some Charmin that we have at home. Uh, it's thicker, and some of these designs will work really well on thicker toilet paper like this. Others will look cleaner on a thinner, crisper type. So, you know, probably whatever your employer provides, honestly. <laughs> Sandpaper for your bum. But I've just got some Charmin here, um, <laughs> which I like Charmin's. Charmin's logo or, or their motto, the enjoy the go. That's just Charmin's way of saying enjoy pooping, which thanks Charmin, I, I will. <laughs> anyway, that aside, I'm going to show you how to fold just a few really simple uh, public domain uh, toilet paper origami designs. Uh, you can find these probably on Wikipedia or just browsing the internet, but our first one really simple, really understated. We're just going to take our first sheet, our first square, um, and you will need perforated toilet paper for most of these, so take your first square, just fold the corner. Being very careful not to tear your toilet paper. And this is it for the first one. This one is, like I said, extremely simple. Anybody can do this one. And it just kind of makes it look a little more elegant. Makes your bathroom experience a little more fancy. But yeah, that's the first one. If you wanted to get two folds in instead, you still just take that first square. 
And uh, this one you'll very commonly see in hotel rooms and the like. Uh, this one is probably among the most common that you'll see. They actually have, um, in Japan, there's a machine that, that does this for you now. I forget what it's called, but I'll try to add a link to it in the description. It's a... Uh, but yeah, they have a machine that will just fold these first two corners in and give you that traditional hotel room triangle um, that sits on the roll like that. So all the ones I'm going to show you are going to be on the roll, but um, you'll find some that uh, go in into the actual cardboard uh, roll. So you've got it up upright like this, so you might find it like sitting next to the toilet or something and just maybe like a decorative flower or a bow or there, there's all sorts out there. But we're just going to stick to really simple on the roll designs for now. So those are the first two. Extremely simple. Anybody can do them, which I like that. Makes um, makes it very accessible, so you can surprise your family members with these. <laughs> I know I have been with my with my practice, just leaving surprise toilet paper origami. Always fun. So uh, our next one, we're just going to take a corner, fold it upright like so. Now you're going to take the bottom corner and fold it up to meet this edge. And now you flip that upward. So you've just got this triangular bit now. Now you're going to go on the inside here and it's basically, um, I think this is a half blinced base, so just you can tell where you're folding to if you can feel the corner at the bottom of um, your roll here. Just take this top corner, fold it to, to meet that right in the center line. And this one comes down to meet it along that same edge. So this is what it looks like on the inside, and then when you lay it down on the roll, you'll have this nifty little square shape. Again, really simple, but just adds a little bit of pizzazz. So this next one, um, I don't know if it's got a proper name, but I just, it looks like bunting to me, so we'll call it bunting. And there's not really a reference point for this, so we're just going to take about um, like one and a half to two centimeters, fold it upwards, and uh, do sort of an accordion fold with this then. So making sure that uh, all of these are matching up and the same size. We're going to do about six or seven of those to make it look nice. You can do more than that if you want a more layered bunting look to it. But we got one, two, three, four, Five. We'll stop at six for this one. So now that you've got your paper accordioned like this, you're going to kind of press down in the middle and fold this fellow in half. And you'll notice as you do this, you're going to form a triangle right in here just press those down, doing it as tidily as you can. And I like to lock these inner layers in together, so where these two raw edges meet, I fold a triangle, or uh, I take the corners here and I fold it inward. And I'll probably do that twice here, just to make sure it stays put. It can be a little trickier on fluffier toilet paper like this, so just really make sure as you're doing this you're 
putting in a nice firm pinch so that it'll stay in place nicely once you fluff the bunting out. So you take the edges here and just kind of fluff those out to look nice. And you've got like this bunting look. Depending on your toilet paper, like it's like I said, um, it'll kind of depend how well it stays in place. Um, but yeah, it'll sit on the roll roughly like this. A very simple one also looks very nice. I'll just smooth this toilet paper back out. It's already starting to get some wear and tear on it. All right, so this next one, uh, we're gonna do a diamond shape. So we're just going to, there's not particularly a reference point for this one either. So just make sure that uh, you're folding your a triangle in on either side like this. And just make sure that the other side matches up as closely as you can possibly get it to look nice. And you're going to roll this back so that you've got your, your perforated edge here. And on the other side, you're going to do that half blinced base again like we did before, just meeting those two uh, in the middle. You'll have a nice little diamond shape like this when you're done. Which my mine looks a little rough because of the other folds we put in there, but if you do it with a uh, with a crisp clean sheet, it'll look a little nicer. But yeah, you've got that diamond look. Now, um, a variation of this one that I am fond of is the heart, which this isn't traditional origami, which I mean, it's toilet paper origami, so obviously not traditional, but uh, this one requires just a little bit of tearing, so I'll say um, for this, uh, you can see the bunting edges that I still have on here. I'd probably tear right in the middle, approximately to that first edge. And then you simply fold your corners inward. Again, trying to roughly match um, make, make it symmetrical so that your your sides both match up about the same but you'll get this lovely little heart shape then so those are some of the basic ones that I wanted to show you there are loads more out there sailboats swans cranes a lot of different um, basic ones and advanced ones I'll show you a few that uh, so this, this is uh, Linda Wright's book on toilet paper origami. Uh, hers is the only one I could find out there, uh, particularly that, that demonstrates how to fold all of these. And uh, I'll show you a few of hers that I really enjoyed that I folded ahead of time for you guys. Um, so this is her rose, um, and it just requires you tear off um, two squares from the roll to make the leaves. And then it's just a simple matter of um, you take four sheets, twirl it up, and then she shows you how to compile this rose. And, uh, and it just sits on the, on the roll. And it looks very sweet. A nice little Valentine's Day toilet paper origami for your loved one. <laughs> There's that one, and I really also enjoyed her, this one's called the Bodacious Bow, which off the roll it seems to like to come apart, but on the roll it'll look something like this, which is also on the cover of her book, as you'll see. So this one, um, this one also requires tearing off some toilet paper for folding, so you tear off, uh, 
two contiguous sheets and then you tear off four contiguous sheets and uh, that part makes the bow and then you uh, while still on the roll you tear to the center fold those la um, those layers in and then just wrap it around and it stays just like that I thought that one looked really nice too uh, let's see the last one of hers that I have which ah, seems to have fallen off my workbench. Let me redo this for you real quick. So this is her tulip. And basically, um, this one's also an on the roll design. And you just make a little pocket basically. And you put your little origami toilet paper flower in there. And it sits like that. That one's for springtime. I'm just kidding, these are for any time of the year. But yeah, these are a lot of fun. Um, it's just kind of a fun subject. It's uh, something I hadn't really thought about before and then I saw a book on it and was like, I need to tackle this, this is awesome. <laughs> Which, uh, during quarantine, I, uh, I looked through uh, a whole bunch of different, like, there were a lot of challenges out there, and one of them was an origami toilet paper challenge. And some people, if you just go online and look up, like, origami toilet paper challenge, you'll find a whole array of really cool designs that people have done, some really elaborate ones that turned out excellent. Um, I haven't tackled any of those, but uh, here are some of the basic ones. If you guys want to just learn how to get started, or if you're in the hospitality business and uh, this seems like it's up your alley, I definitely recommend this. And uh, she also includes, um, so, so like I mentioned, some of these are upright. So the roll sits upright like this and you put the origami creation inside the tube. Whereas others like this are on the roll. And she provides uh, right at the end of the book say you're in the hospita uh, hospitality business or you just like your ba uh, bathroom to look extra fancy, um, a whole array of suggestions for, you know, just tying ribbons around your toilet paper, monogramming them, um, embossing, uh, putting your stamp or logo for your business on there uh, to add a little bit of extra class to your toilet paper. Those turn out really cool. <laughs> the end. But yeah, this is a really fun book. If you guys want to check this out, I'll provide a link um, for you to to go and purchase this if you would like. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned a little something about toilet paper origami and enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I'll have other fun content out like this soon. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you next time.